Okay, we've just begun to take a look at forms in HTML. We looked at some text fields, how to use a text field, and how to use a password field. And so far, that's what our form looks like. But now I want to add a little something more to that. What I'd like to do is add an account type field. Now let's assume that we're creating a user account at a school. And at this school, there are three roles that you can assume. You're either a student, or you're a teacher, or you're an administrator. But no one can be all three, or any combination of the two. If you're a student, that's all you are. If you're a teacher, that's all you can be. You can't be a student and a teacher, or a teacher and an administrator. So let's see how we would go ahead and create this in our form. Let's load up our text wrangler, and here's our form so far. And let's type in account type. And then let's have a little break. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is soliciting input, <coughs> excuse me, from our viewer. So I've got input type equals, you know, when I have a mutually exclusive situation where I can choose one and only one value, my choices are what we would call discrete. It reminds me of the old-fashioned radios that you would find in a car. You know the ones with the push buttons? You know there are five or six buttons and when you pushed one button you selected a station. You pressed another button and you selected another station and then you could only have one station at a time. That's really all you wanted. So given that metaphor of a car radio You'll see why we call these radio buttons, and our type is radio. Now, we're going to have to have another variable in memory where we can store our user's choice. And I'm going to call that role. What is the user's role? Now, this is one choice that I'm working on right now, just one of the three choices. So I'm going to put in value, if they make this choice, they are a student, okay? So we would have a student. And let's end the input. And then I'm going to display to the right of the button the words student. And then let's have a break. So these will be on separate lines. Now I'm going to copy that code and paste it twice. So it'll save us a few, few moments. So I'm going to highlight those three lines, do an open apple C to copy to my keyboard buffer, and then an open apple. V to copy it once, again to copy it twice. And let's go up to the second one and we're simply going to change the word student to be teacher. So if they click on the second button, the value teacher is going to be stored in the variable role. And then let's change this text to match. Teacher. Now let's go down and let's get our administrator. Let's store admin in role if they make the third choice. And let's help our users out by displaying the word administrator. Okay, so I've got a radio button with three choices. Let's save this out.
and then let's see what it looks like by refreshing our Safari window. Okay, so my form has changed a little bit. I can put in a name, first name, last name, login, a password, which you cannot see, and then I can select teacher. Now, maybe I promoted myself and I become the administrator. If I click on the administrator button, I'm no longer a teacher. Or maybe I want to get smart so I become a student. Well, I'm no longer an administrator. It's a mutually exclusive choice. That's all for radio buttons. And if the next podcast, we'll talk about check boxes.